Almost one in three American women will have an abortion at some point in their lives. But even though the Supreme Court made it legal in 1973, states have been having a party with restrictions since then, testing the limits of federal law. States usually allow abortions when life-threatening health issues are involved or in cases of rape or incest. But otherwise, there are a lot of obstacles. Here are some of the biggest ones women face when it comes to getting an abortion as a matter of personal choice. Obstacle number one, age. If you're under 18, lots of states require that a parent gets notified if you want an abortion, and some require that a parent gives their consent. In eight states, mom or dad even has to provide a written letter of consent that's been notarized. Going further, several states require that both parents get notified or give consent. But young women who don't want to tell their rents don't have to in these states. Obstacle two, time. Legally, even just a week can make a huge difference. 18 states ban abortion past somewhere between 20 and 26 weeks of pregnancy, which is measured from the date of your last period. Abortions before 13 weeks, the first trimester, are the most common and the least restricted. And abortions past 26 weeks in the third trimester are extremely rare. There are only four known doctors in the country who perform them. Obstacle three, money. The average cost of a first trimester abortion nationwide is $451, but it can range between $300 and $950. If you have private insurance, there's a chance it could cover the procedure. We talked to Dr. Alina Salganikov, Director of Women's Health Policy for the Kaiser Family Foundation. And she said that many states actually force private insurers not to cover abortion, and the best way to find out if your policy does is to ask. On the other hand, women who have Medicaid are covered for an abortion in these 16 states. Elsewhere, some states not only ban Medicaid and private insurers from covering it, they also force Obamacare insurers not to cover abortions either. But there are some other ways to pay. Salganikov said many clinics offer help on a case-by-case -case basis, and she also mentioned the National Network of Abortion Funds, which helps foot the bill for women who can't afford it. Obstacle four, finding a clinic or doctor. It could be pretty tough to find a clinic if you live in one of these states. Each state has only three abortion providers or less. Elizabeth Nash, who works at the Guttmacher Institute, which collects abortion data, says one of the best resources for finding clinics is the National Abortion Federation hotline. They have a comprehensive list of all abortion providers in the country. Obstacle five, waiting and getting a talking to. In several states, women have to visit a clinic twice, the first time so they can get a lecture, the second time for the actual abortion. In 26 states, women are also required to review state-prepared materials on abortion that may or may not be all that factual, like in Indiana, where a woman is told that the fetus can feel pain before 22 weeks. Women may even be referred to so-called crisis pregnancy centers designed to convince them not to get an abortion. And finally, in 13 states, women need to get an ultrasound before the actual procedure. And in three of those states, women are required to look at the image. As you've probably gathered at this point, it's complicated and confusing, often by design. But broadly speaking, it's hardest to get an abortion in Texas, Mississippi, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Who makes it easiest? California, New York, and Washington State. Even just getting the facts on abortion in the US can be an uphill battle. But the more knowledge you have about the laws in your states, the better. Personhood's really about abortion and a woman's right to have one. P.S. That right was granted by the Supreme Court back in 1973, but the show must go on.